the MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What is up, you guys? The teller. We got UFC Fight Night, Robert Whitaker versus Darren Till. It's going to be a good one. Got some some news I want to break to you guys here, so stay tuned uh, throughout the show. And, and I promise you guys I'll give you an excellent uh, breakdown for this event as well. How to bust out the MLB gear, representing my Florida Marlins. Nowadays they go by the Miami Marlins, but to me they're always the Florida Marlins. Been a diehard fan since I was a little kid. Uh, big baseball fan here, big football fan, big hockey fan. We got the NHL is going to be picking up here again soon, starting off right into the playoffs. So I'm excited for all that. Uh, but, you know, first and foremost, baseball season is starting up this week. So shout out to all my baseball fans. And, um, you know, I'm one of those types of guys, you know, my entire family, they're all from New York. They're all uh, Giants fans, Yankees fans. But I was the first born down here from my family. And even though they all try to push upon all the, those New York teams on me, I always held true and, you know, st stood, stood true to the test. You know what I mean? I'm born and raised down here, so I got to represent where I'm from. And uh, hopefully you guys are like that as well, because down in South Florida, we got a lot of phony fans. Uh, a lot of people from South Florida, they root for, for these Northeast teams, Boston, uh, New York, this and that. They're like, oh, my grandpa was from New York. My grandpa was from the Bronx. You know, I'm not with that stuff. You know what I mean? I, I'm more connected to New York than half of these guys. I basically grew up half of my life in New York as well. My entire family's from there. None of that though, man. It's, you know, I'm not rooting for any New York teams. You know, I don't, I don't mind the Yankees and the Giants, but as far as the Jets and Mets go... Don't even get me started. That's where I stand, man. So excited for the baseball season uh, to, to kick off this week. But, uh, you know, back to MMA. We got an excellent card taking place this Saturday. The UFC just keeps pumping out these cards. Uh, of course, we just had another card, you know, this this previous Saturday. We got to touch upon that. And I, I guess that's what we'll do here. Uh, Joseph Benavides versus Davison Figueredo. Figueredo looked amazing. The new flyweight champion. Uh, shout out to Figueredo first and foremost before we even touch up the card, man. This guy is is the new flyweight kingpin, and I'm extremely excited to see him fighting his next bout, whoever it's against. So, uh, you know that that will be good. We'll, we'll start. We'll go from the top of the card. We'll work our way down. Jack Hermanson, he looked uh, amazing. I mean, he, he did get slammed down. Uh, Gaston looked good in that one point in time, but boom, Hermanson threw threw on the heel hook, got the finish. Uh, Rafael Fazeev looked good. There's another another dog hit on this card. Um, well, not, not really that these guys were dogs, but there was a couple dogs throughout the car, card. Arian Lipsky looked very good in that fight. Nasty knee, barred, knee bar sitting on top of her, kind of like, I wouldn't call it a mount, but you know what I mean, on top position, facing you know the opposite way, cranking on the leg, hyperextending the knee. It was pretty nasty. Askar Askarov pushed the pace on Pantoja, took that fight. Uh, we got the UFC newcomer who looked very good. Uh, I told you he was dangerous on the feet too, working with a solid striking coach, but of course, you know his, his jiu-jitsu is serious as well, but... Got the knockout on the feet. Grant Dawson, one of my plays in the card, it hit. Grant Dawson looked phenomenal. Uh, overall, it wasn't a profitable card for me, so you're not going to see me really too happy as far as betting-wise you know, in regards to this card. But Grant Dawson did come through, and that should have been my big play in the card. I kind of regret that. And, and when I'm talking about grabbing Grant Dawson and, and my other play I'm going to talk about here in a minute, I got them at excellent lines. I didn't get them at those lines. A lot of, a lot of guys grabbed them. I got Dawson very low. Uh, right around minus 200 when he dropped there for a while. So he did end up going back up. But I got him when he when he dropped. That's why I had to jump on him there. Uh, Joel Alvarez looked very good. Pulled off the guillotine. That guy's got to keep an eye on Joel Alvarez. Brett Johns, you know, he upset my party. I had a big play on Montel Jackson. Uh, some people were saying, oh, they could have won either way. I disagree. I thought Brett Johns did enough. I thought he won the, the last two rounds fair and square. Uh, didn't do anything, though. Just completely pushing Montel Jackson against the cage. And it was Montel Jackson's fault for being way too calm in there. I thought Montel Jackson would have easily, easily been able to uh, to stuff the takedowns and start to work his striking. He was so tentative, though. He was so nervous to throw his hands. You could, you could just tell. Um, almost stopped the fight in the first round, but he didn't. So... Fight did not play out like I thought it would. I was big on Montel Jackson. Very disappointed in him there. Uh, Brett Johns is really showing to be a, a tough grappler, which uh, I know he has the, the judo background and whatnot, but this guy is just, he's a tough dude. He's like a leech. So, you know, he spoiled the party there. Um, Amir Albazi looked excellent. Pulled off the first triangle choke um, with his legs, you know, from his guard uh, in the year of 2020. Uh, first... Uh, submission triangle that we got this year. It's pretty crazy to, to hear that stat. Armand Sarukian, this is the guy that we should have went in on, man. Uh, the line was a little high. I thought Dave, Davi Ramos was looking good in the first round, but Sarukian, this guy's striking just evolved so much uh, throughout the year. He's so young. That guy has future champion written all over him. And then Sergey Spivak, 
Remember the nasty the nasty decision? One of the judges called it a draw. Disgusting. Sergey Spivak easily won the first and the third round, uh, third rounds, and probably the second too. But uh, Carlos Felipe actually, you know, for his body type, you know, he held his own. But third round, he got beat up. So, um, you know, that, that that's the card right there for you guys. And uh, now we got another card because we're bouncing right to the next one, man. Whitaker versus Till. Here's the lines, as you guys can see. I mean, there's a couple that are that are, you know. Not bad. Some playable odds here. We got some heavy favorites as well. Some interesting fights. We're going to be getting into all of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's time to get into it, huh? Let's do it. So in the first fight, we got Nathaniel Wood taking on John Castaneda. This guy Castaneda, 17-4. and four. We'll take a look at him real quick. The sexy Mexi. And the, the line is, is, is skewed, man. It's, it's far apart here. Uh, Nathaniel Wood's coming, at, coming in around a minus 425. It's a very high line. Especially against a guy in John Castaneda, who actually has a decent record here. Twenty-eight years old, uh, only won one of his last three fights. But you know the, the fight against uh, Jose Alde was actually pretty close, split decision over there in Combate. And uh, you know this guy's been winning fights. Not a lot of big names on his resume. If you look into these guys, not a lot of big names. You got Chris Beal, a uh, former guy in the Ultimate Fighter, with uh, he had Ronda Rousey as his coach. So you know getting a finish on him with the with the hands that was pretty impressive to see, I guess. Um, Maybe not so much impressive, but something worth noting of uh, Nathaniel Wood. This is a guy that had a lot of hype, uh, and I guess he technically he still does. You know, they call him the prospect, and he's still coming in, uh, you know, in the minus four hundred range on his fights. But did get derailed against John Dodson. For those of you guys that remember that fight, uh, got tagged, got finished in the third round. So that wasn't a good look for him. Before that, though, he was going out there just destroying guys. Andre Iwal, uh, Jose Alberto Quinoez, and he's just pulling off the the uh, the submission skills left and right. I, I think this guy is decent on the feet, but definitely more of a jiu-jitsu based fighter. Kind of reminds me of the guy that we just saw fight uh, on that Wednesday card. Uh, name slipping my name, my mind right now. The guy from Wales, um, slipping my mind right now. You guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, one of the top prospects in the game right now, undefeated. Um, you guys get you catch the, my drift here. But, you know, similar type of uh, hype behind him and whatnot, you know. And remember, he's coming in as a minus 400 and change after coming off a loss. But so I, it, people are high on this guy. I expect him to win this fight. I think he could submit John Castaneda. I think, honestly, he could hold his own in the feet as well. I think that he should he should win this fight pretty comfortably. Um, and other than that, we'll see if John Castaneda is going to take a big step up and prove himself. But as far as on tape, I didn't see nothing extremely impressive from him. He could, you know, he could hold his own on the feet. Um, he's a balanced fighter, but you know this is a fight that uh, Nathaniel Wood's supposed to win. So uh, the line is high, though. Be careful. There's a lot of high lines on these cards, and we've been seeing this past week. A lot of dogs have been coming through. A lot of wild things have been happening. It's been very unpredictable. You know, fights are taking place over in Abu Dhabi. I guess fighters' heads are messed up and whatnot. A lot of unpredictable, wacky things have been happening. So you you know you be careful now. What what type of lines you're getting? Uh, but th there's, there's your man over here, Nathaniel Wood. Always comes in in phenomenal shape. And like I said, very well-rounded fighter. But mostly you got to watch out for his jiu-jitsu skills. Um, here's John Castaneda. The sexy Mexi he likes to go by. And, uh, we'll see if he can make a name for himself here. I, I don't really expect him to pull this fight off. But you never know, man. We'll, we'll see what happens. And um, compare them real quick as far as uh, their body types and whatnot. Coming in with the same reach, and uh, Castaneda has an inch of height advantage. I mean, these these guys are pretty much identical. And uh, this guy Nathaniel Wood, somebody to keep an eye on moving forward. Definitely, this guy has he has hype for for a reason. All right, slide on to the next fight. Shout out to everybody that joined the Fight Companion show as well, um, Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, definitely been uh, enjoying the Fight Companion shows that we've been doing. So. You know, we're going to be doing them again this upcoming Saturday. Hope to see you guys there. And uh, I want to, I'm going to be breaking the news here of who's going to be on MMA Live Discussion this Thursday. I'm extremely excited to let you guys know because I think we're going to have a big crowd tuning in to see this, this guest that's joining Thursday. A lot of you guys are going to be excited, I think. So stay tuned, and I'll break the news to you guys. Ramazan Amiv taking on Nicholas Stolze, the, uh, the German fighter. Uh, Amiv coming in as a, a very a very big favorite. They have him listed here around minus three seventy five. I think at this point, you know, yeah, right around there still as high as minus four hundred on some some books. And Ramazan Amiv is a you know a tough Dagestani fighter, thirty three years old. He's been handling business. 
uh, is coming off a loss, but still, you know, in the UFC, he's been handling business for the most part. Um, you know, won his first three fights, took out Sam Alvey, saw that fight live, then took out Alberto Mina, Stefan Sikulic, Sikulic. So not a lot of big names here. Sam Alvey has been having trouble winning fights in general. Uh, Amiv is very well-rounded. He can hold his own on the feet. Good striker. Obviously has that, that Dagestani grappling at the end of the day. Almost all those guys from Dagestan are going to have good grappling. It's almost impossible for them not to have good grappling. You know, it's just, it's part of their nature over there. And if you're going to be training MMA, you're, you're, you're grappling with some of the best grapplers in the world. So it's going to, it just continues to rub off on all of them. So Amiv is, he is a solid grappler as well. Uh, you know, he has submission skills. Uh, you see this Anaconda choke over here. That was against Mikel Falco. If you guys remember him from Bellator, uh, there's a crazy video. If you guys want to see a crazy video on this guy, I was a big fan of his in Bellator way back in the day, old school Bellator, Bellator days. He, he had a street fight video, uh, or not a street, uh, there was video footage of him getting in a street fight. He was at a gas station and got in a brawl with these dudes. And even though he's a nasty fighter that destroys guys in the octagon or in the cage, uh, he got whooped that, that, that fight. So... He kind of got jumped. He was wasted and he got blindsided. But if you want to see a nasty beating, you look that up. And um, I'll pull him up real quick for you guys to see. Shout out to the, the people that know this guy. Man, this guy was an OG Bellator fighter back in the day. Losses like crazy like right now. Losses galore. But I'm talking about, you know, this is where he was a true threat, man. You see him over here taking on Alexander Shlomenko. And, uh, you know, he was he was doing his thing over here. Um, but all right, back on, back to, uh, to the event taking place this Saturday. Uh, this newcomer, Nicholas Stoles, I've been watching a lot of tape on this guy. And um, real quick. Hold on a second, guys. Let's see, yeah, oh, here he is right here. Yeah, uh, you know, this guy, he's a very uh, a wiry type of fighter. He has, you know, he's long in there. Um, he's an aggressive type of fighter when you watch him on film. You know, at, at, point, at times, he kind of looks like, uh, you know, he's backpedaling and whatnot and he's throwing a strike and then he's shelling up, but it's not necessarily his style though. Cause he did do that at times, but then at the same time, if he senses a little bit of weakness, he's charging in, he's throwing heavy strikes. He'll try to take you out as well. So from what I saw on tape, he is an aggressive fighter. He will give you a run, uh, for, for your dollar. If you have money behind him, decent jujitsu skills, I would say his jujitsu is his strength. Um, you know, you take a look at his resume, uh, pulling off a couple of rear naked chokes, uh, one of the fights I was just watching was this Jan Janka fight. Looked good in that fight. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I don't know if I want to say he's a UFC caliber fighter. I don't know. Maybe he's getting an opportunity based on what's going on right now. Uh, I really don't expect him to be on the level of Ramazan Amiv. But again, this guy is tough. He's tough. He's wiry. He's he's aggressive. He has a very unorthodox style. Like I said, he's shelling up, then he's whipping a body strike to you. He's backpedaling. He's doing all types of wild stuff. Uh, very unorthodox. But I, I expect Ramazan Amiv. A guy that is more just, he's more polished. Um, you know, I expect him to win this fight for sure. Good striking. Uh, you know, you see him over here supporting Khabib and the family. You know, of course, he's part of the, the whole Dagestani family. All those guys over there. And a bunch of excellent fighters. You guys know the deal with these Dagestani fighters. Um, all those guys from that part of the world. I've been talking about it a lot recently. But these guys are serious fighters. And I definitely got to pick him to win the fight. So, um I don't know if any of you guys are going to be poking at that line. Uh, right now, we got it at. I mean, you can catch him around plus plus three fifteen, and he's an aggressive, skilled fighter to a, to a sense. But Ramazan's going to be on another level. I'm telling you guys about that. So definitely going to pick Ramazan to win the fight. And shout out to uh, Bellator taking place this Friday. Remember, guys, Bellator is is back on the map. I'm going to be doing a prediction video for at least the main card of Bellator, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to be putting that out to you guys as well. And we got, we're going to have a good weekend of fights. I think LFA is also taking place. All right, we got the the bantamweight division over on the women's side. We got Betch Coera taking on Panny Kianzad. Uh, of course, Panny, this, this girl's from the Ultimate Fighter. A lot of you guys are familiar with her from, from the, the, the Ultimate Fighter show. Tough girl, good grappling. Uh, coming off a nice win against Jessica Rose Clark. Um, you know, she's a tough chick. She pushes the pace on you. Lost to Macy Chase on. You guys all remember Macy Chase on. A lot of hype was behind her, but since been derailed. Uh, did her thing on the Ultimate Fighter show. You know, won a, won a bunch of uh, a bunch of fights on in the house. And uh, and she's fought, you know, she's fought. Fought girls around the way from even back in 2018. Took on Sarah Kaufman. Uh, Tanya Evinger, crafty veteran, took on Jessica Rose Clark once again. And uh, Lena Landsberg, I mean, she's 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 actually been around the block, man. Don't get it twisted. Doesn't have a lot of UFC fights, 
But she's been around the block. Tough chick. And then, um, let's see. Pull up her opponent here. There's Betch Coeta. I had to pull up the uh, when Ronda Rousey put her to put her to bed because I, I still find that so ridiculous that Ronda Rousey put her to bed with the hands, looking like Mike Tyson out there. Got everybody hyped up like Ronda Rousey was this this nasty striker all of a sudden. But really, I think Betch Coeta was just starstruck or something. Uh, did not look good in that fight. Um, but you know what? Betch Coeta has been putting it together as of recently. Uh, I, I picked her to win her last fight. She was a dog. She came through and. Um, She's coming into this fight as a dog again. She's 37 years old. Uh, she took out Sajara Eubanks, looked good in that fight, was dancing in the octagon, you know what I mean? Everyone loves to see her dance, get a little loose in there. Uh, and Sarge can fight too, so don't get it twisted. She's okay for the division, but you know, you look at all these losses she's had. I mean, they're against very, very high quality uh, mixed martial artists. You know, for the division, Irene Aldana, very tough fighter. Holly Holm, world class. Raquel Pennington, split decision loss. Raquel Pennington is the real deal. We saw what Raquel Pennington just did the other week, right? A couple weeks back. And Ra Raquel Pennington's been putting in work. She's a true gatekeeper at the top, you know, at the top of the division. And then the Ronda Rousey loss. Uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Betch Coeta to win this fight. I'm taking the dog here. Uh, she's tough. I, I like the nickname the Pitbull. It suits her very good. She can stuff your takedowns, and, and she has that pitter patter type style. You know, she'll she'll try to hit hit you up with the hands, and it looks good for the judges. She's you know she's always grunting in there. She's trying to look all tough. The judges like that. And um, even though Ronda Rousey slept her. See her taking a little nap there. Uh, I'm going to pick her to win this fight. Um, you know, Panny's not a bad fighter either, though. Very aggressive. You see her on the some uh, some of her, her work she's done over here in the Ultimate Fighter. and Nice hair. But I'm going to go with the dog here. All right. Ooh, we got Tanner Bozer. Getting back into the octagon. I, I told you guys that I've been talking to Tanner. He just was so busy because I guess he already knew that this fight was going to be taking place. Uh, he's known, obviously, for a while. And uh, taking another fight on short notice. You know, jumping right back in there. And um, taking on Rafael Pessoa, who looked very good in his last fight. Uh, but Tanner Bozer looked amazing. So Tanner was willing to come on MMA Live Discussion. And we're still going to get an interview with him regardless. It's just he, Thursday nights, he's been training around that time. Because think about it, he's fighting late night. And um, he wants to start getting himself you know, used to training at that time. So he's been busy. I might be able to get him on the on the live show uh, on a Thursday after this win here. Maybe he'll be able to get a, a night off or whatnot. I'll keep you guys updated. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing an interview with him. Uh, not live, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to get it recorded. I'm going to upload it to you guys. And uh, he, got, he has a tough fight here. A lot of people wanted to see him take on Maurice Green, but he got another tough opponent who's coming off a, a nice victory in R Rafael Pessoa. And uh, yep, ten and one. This guy's rangy, six foot three. Has a nice little reach on him as well. Took out Jeff Hughes. Jeff Hughes is a guy that was from the Ultimate Fighter. Has good boxing, and, and he took over that fight. Man, he really looked good in that fight. Uh, you know, in, in the fight before, they lost to Cyril Gaines. Cyril Gaines, one of the top guys. This is a guy that could be holding gold here very soon. So don't look too much into that. Cyril Gaines, the real deal. Cyril Gaines did go out there and outclass him. Uh, pulled off the arm triangle choke, and uh, it's kind of surprising to see that Cyril Gaines has the submission skills as well because he's a you know, a striking-based fighter, but I really wouldn't look too much into that. This guy is serious. So now you got Tanner Bozer. Tanner Bozer is just, this guy is a tank, man. Just destroyed Felipe Lins. Remember that, that knockout against Felipe in the first round? And he looked a phenomenal in that fight. Came in about 10 pounds uh, lighter than he usually does, and obviously it's definitely helping him out. They have a common opponent, took on Cyril Gain as well, and he was able to, uh, to you know, survive the onslaught of Gain. He was very tough in there. So, you know, yeah, that's just MMA math for you, but you can't really use that all the time. But they have a common opponent there. I believe that Bozer took that uh, Daniel Spitz fight on short notice too. And he still looked good in that fight, but you expect him to finish Spitz. I think right now he probably would go out there and finish him. I'm definitely not going to sleep on uh, on the tank over here. Again, I'm not uh, the bulldozer. I'm not going to sleep on Tanner this time. Uh, definitely going to pick Tanner to win this fight, but he does have a tough opponent in front of him. This guy, Rafael Pessoa, you know, tough dude, man. He's a tough dude. He's light on his feet for his size. You know, he's uh, decent striking. And then uh, Tanner Bozer, there he is knocking out Felipe Linz, which was one of, one of the most nasty knockouts I've seen in a long time. So, the bulldozer. All right. Now, we got another another fighter that's hopping right back in there. 
guy that just fought. Doesn't seem to be on Tapology. Oh, here it is. Yeah, they moved it up. They've been they've been rotating the card around. All right, so we'll be getting to that in a little bit. They've been uh, adjusting the order of the card, and now we got Movsar Evilov taking on Mike Grundy. This is a very interesting fight. Uh, you know, it's tough because I'm I'm actually really high on both of these guys. I think that both these guys are top prospects. Uh, you know, as far as most Movsar Movsar goes, I like to refer to him as a, a five star prospect. This guy is a stud, undefeated, coming from Russia. Relentless chain grappling. If you stuff his takedown, it doesn't matter. He's going to leech on three more attempts. He's eventually going to get you down. Um, but you know what? He's taking on a guy, Mike Grundy, that has very, very high level wrestling, which is surprising too, coming over from from, from that side of the, you know the other side of the pond over there in England. Not a lot of top level grapplers, but Mike Grundy has excellent wrestling, and uh, and he's a big dude. Um, you know these guys are uh, identical as far as the size goes: five foot seven, seventy two inch reach, and you know this is a fight. This is a fight that, you know, it's we're really going to see some interesting stuff go down. Is Movsar going to be able to get the takedowns against Mike Grundy? I don't know if he can. Uh, maybe Mike Grundy stuffs a good amount of them, and then maybe he's, Movsar, like I said, with the chain grappling, eventually gets a takedown. Or Mike Grundy's grappling so good, maybe Grundy even gets a takedown. I know I wouldn't be surprised. Um, th this is a very interesting fight. You know, it's, it's it kind of sucks for me because I've been looking to grab Mike Grundy in the right spot. And uh, Movsar, you guys know the deal. He's always coming in as a heavy favorite. And they're still respecting him here, even against a very formidable opponent. Um, you know, Mike Grundy, he just knocked out Nad Naramani. Uh, you know, shout out to Nad Naramani for losing that fight this past weekend. Made some money against him. Uh, taking on, you know, taking Grant Dawson, one of the top guys in the game right now. Uh, Grant Dawson was able to get him down a little bit. You know, he almost got the rear naked choke in. Uh, but, you know, Dawson was way bigger than him. Mike Grundy, Mike, excuse me, Mike Grundy actually slept Nad Naramani. So the hands are coming around. He has power. Movsar doesn't have so much power on the feet as he just puts a pace on you and just, you know, keeps the work rates crazy. This is scary. He's putting in time at American Top Team. And, um, you know, once I was really looking into it, what he's been doing, how he's been putting in work at Top Team and whatnot, I couldn't pick against him. I really was contemplating picking Grundy right here. I think it's a bad matchup for him because Grundy could stuff the takedowns and probably make this a brawl. But I, I still got to go Evelov, Movsar, Movsar. As far as the line goes, I wouldn't be touching that probably. Unless it came down a little bit, maybe you contemplate it, but you can catch him right now, 185. Definitely some money coming in on Grundy, and rightfully so. I think the line should be a lot closer. Grundy, if Grundy goes out there and wins this fight, he's going to have a lot of momentum behind him. He's going to take all Mosar's momentum. So, But I, I got to go with Mosar Evilov. I got to pick him to win the fight. Dude is just a beast. 26 years old. He has youth on his side. He's, he's tenacious. And his striking's not that bad either, and it's going to get better working with top team. So, Movsar Ivilov. All right, we got a guy hopping back into the octagon. It's been a long time, right? Jake Collier. You guys remember him? This guy used to get it. He had a couple of shots back in the day. He's only 31 years old, and his last fight was in 2017. So, a long time outside the octagon. Did take out Marcel Fortuna. Uh, Marcel Fortuna, eh, you know, Marcel Fortuna was also finished by a couple of different people. We talked about that recently. And uh, Devin Clark, you know, took him out with the unanimous decision, put the pace on him. Um, he did have that one finish against Alberto Yuda. I mean, this guy Yuda, I'm surprised he ever even fought in the UFC. Donji Yang, he lost to. I mean, there's there's really not a lot of, uh, uh, there's not, not a lot of notable names on his resume. Um, we, I'll tell you how his fighting style is. It's, it's very just bread and butter, very basic, nothing too flashy in my opinion. Um, Tough dude. He's tough. But um, I don't know. You know, and he's coming into this fight. You take a look at the line here. You know, he's almost a two to one dog. And he's probably going to be almost a two to one dog against almost anyone he fights right now inside the UFC, if not worse. And now he's, you know, he's taking on the newcomer, this guy, Tom Aspinall. And uh, pull him up for you guys real quick. Take a look at what Tom's been doing. We've got a lot of newcomers uh, on this event right here. This guy, Tom Aspinall, uh, you know, I was watching some fight footage on him. And, uh, you know, he comes in a little bit chubby. He's a little bit slow. I would say that he looks tough. You, you watch his fights on tape. He looks like he's a tough guy. Decent uh, decent takedown defense. But again, I mean, who, who were the guys that he was fighting against? I'm watching the film. And I'm like, who is this guy? But the guys were trying to shoot in on him. And he was stuffing the takedowns. And, uh, you know, was dropping some bombs with his hands. But I don't know. Something about it looked very slow and not that impressive to me. 
Um, you know, 27 years old, six foot five. He's a big dude. You know, has a couple of losses on his record too. Uh, one was a DQ, but uh, I mean, you, you take a look at the guys that he's fighting against. I mean, two and one resume. I mean, that's that's what I'm talking about. So this guy is very green, and um, <laughs> I don't know about touching him at, at a line like that, right? You're gonna trust this newcomer at a minus 225. Guy's coming in, he's gonna look a little chubby and whatnot. Um, you know, but maybe he goes in and he makes a name for himself. You never know. Uh, you know, Jay Collier has been inside the octagon before. This guy's been there. You know, I'm sure he's he's mentally ready. Although he's been outside the octagon for some time too. I mean, hopefully he has his head straight, but he's been there. And um, I, you know, I really almost want to pick Collier, but at the end of the day, Collier, man, it's hard to pick this dude to win a fight. And I, I'm not going to pick him. I'm going to pick the newcomer, Tom Aspinall. All right. Yeah, a lot of European fighters making their debuts. On these cards, man, it's cool to see. One in particular, we're going to be talking talking about in a little bit. Who looked phenomenal in his debut. All right, now we got Nicholas Dalby taking on Jesse, the body snatcher Ronson, another guy that's getting an opportunity. That's you know he's had opportunities throughout the years, right? Uh, Jesse Ronson. You see him put losing some fights over there in the PFL. Just won a fight against some some guy Troy Lampson, uh, but you know. Look, fighting over an ACB as well. This guy's a, you know, he's a road warrior. He's been traveling the uh, the world fighting, and he's a, he's a fighter. You know, but let's, let's find his UFC fights. Another summer down here. Here we go. Taking on guys like Kevin Lee, split decision loss. Francisco Trinaldo, who we're going to be talking about in a little bit, split decision loss. Michelle Prezara, split decision loss. That's tough, man. Three split decision losses. Um, very meat and potatoes, bread and butter type, bread and butter type of fighter like I talked about. Very basic. And um, another guy that's really kind of hard to back, in my opinion. And um, take a look at his opponent, Nicholas Dalby. This is a guy that I like a lot. I like Nicholas Dalby. He's came through for me uh, in a few spots before. Very physically fit, very strong, uh, very skilled too. Is striking serious as well. Very well well rounded fighter. Uh, coming off a victory against Alex Cowboy Oliveira, that was a very close fight. For those of you guys that remember that fight, it was uh, took place over in Europe, and it was actually a close fight. Some people thought Cowboy won that fight, but you know, strung off. Had the no contest, but strung off, what, four victories in a row. And then um, this was a guy that had a lot, a lot of hype behind him back in the day, man. He had that draw with Darren Till, was undefeated at the time. And uh, a lot of people thought he should have won that fight. That was a very weird fight, how that played out. Uh, but he was he was dominating that fight at times. He had Darren Till uh, and some, some deep trouble in a couple spots there. Uh, you see he had his back here, man. He was raining shots on him. That was an excellent fight. And Darren Till was very hyped up going into that fight as well, too. Darren Till had a very high line back in the day, man. People were high on him from way back then. And um, Dalby, uh, since then, had three losses in a row. The Carlo Petrosoli was a very tough one for him. If you guys remember that fight, that played out very closely. And that was he left it on the table. Peter Sabata, we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu black belt, very crafty, underrated fighter. Zach Cummings, tough dude, underrated fighter. But those are fights he should have won, and he didn't win. And uh, hopefully he got it together now. And uh, he should be able to easily go out there and take out a guy like Jesse Ronson, uh, you know. But the line's high, the line is very high. So what are you gonna do with that? Minus two seventy, two eighty. Should win that fight though. He really should win that fight. So I don't know if you guys want to parlay it, or, or what you want to do with it. All right. You see Jesse Ronson over here. Guy's been around the block for a long time. I'm not that complicated. I'm just a huge a hell the body snatcher, and he's over there. You see him uh, doing his, uh, making his trip. So tough dude. It'd be cool to see him get a victory, but I don't know if I see that happening, you know? All right. All right, now we got Francisco Trinaldo taking on another European newcomer and Jai Herbert. Guy is a you know a title holder over there in the UK, and uh, I'm I'm very impressed with his boxing. This guy Jai has very good boxing. You know, wa watch the tape on him. Very nice hands. This guy's serious on the feet. Francisco Trinaldo, of course, you guys know the deal with Trinaldo, man. He's old, but I guess he doesn't age. Um, they call him Masuranduba, which means like redwood or something like that, some type of tree. Like he's like a tree. Maybe he's eating some eating the tree or something, and it's like preserving him because this guy looks looks amazing. He's ripped and he's. He doesn't look to be aging at all. It's it's really weird, man. I would love to talk to this guy and get his secret. 
Um, very tough fighter. Was recently robbed of a fight. If you guys remember what fight I'm talking about, completely robbed in that Alexander Hernandez fight. That was a win. So we're talking about four, four, four fights in a row. And just to touch upon that, I know some of you guys disagree. Some of you guys agree with me. You know what I mean? I'll try not to be so emphatic when I say someone was robbed. I know it, it rubs a lot of you guys the wrong way or, you know, a couple of you guys. And, uh, you know, it's just the way that I talk, man, the way I carry myself. But, it, you know, don't get it twisted, man. I'm open-minded and I could I understand your guys' point of view, points of view as well. Um, I did say that I thought Kelvin Gastelum whooped up Darren Till. I stand behind that. Uh, at least maybe not whooped up, but he won the fight. Some people agreed with me. Some people disagreed with me. But I'll try not to be so emphatic like, I, you know, it's, it was that way or that way. Because I, I respect your guys' opinion too. Um, you know, it's the fight game, man. Everyone, close fights like that, people see them differently. Um, this fight, though, if you tell me Alexander Hernandez won this fight, then uh, we got a problem. Comment below. If you think Alexander Hernandez beat um, Trinaldo, you, then you, then I really know you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I think Alexander Hernandez threw two strikes that entire fight. So was on his back foot the entire fight. It was one of the worst robberies I've ever seen. Fight took place over in Texas, I believe, in, you know, in his hometown. Complete robbery. Um, but back to this fight, Trinaldo, uh, basically on a four-fight win streak, did, lost to James Vick, Kevin Lee, as of recently, but took out Paul Felder, Jim Miller, Evan Dunham, Bobby Green, John McDessie. This guy's still a very dangerous fighter, still a very well-rounded fighter. In my opinion, he likes to stuff the takedowns. And he likes to use his striking. Uh, he's a decent striker. Can be a little bit hesitant at times. Uh, and I think that... This fight, you know, is, is going to play out to give this guy Jai, uh, you know, a good opportunity to win this fight. Like I said, this guy is very high-level boxing, in my opinion. Very good hands. I like what I've seen from him. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely think he has an opportunity to win this fight. Coming in at a plus 150, you know, one th plus 130, I, I think that the, the line should probably be a little bit closer. Um, you know, the, the, the champ over there. I believe that's, uh, was it King of the Cage? I believe he was the champ over there. And... Um, you know, I've been hesitant. I, I kind of want to pick him to win this fight, but Trinaldo is such a crafty dude that's been around the block for so long. It's probably a little bit more well-rounded. <clears throat> you know? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pick Trinaldo. I, I can't pick against Trinaldo in this situation. trinaldo has been around the block. He's just... He, he hasn't shown to be aging, and I think that he's more well-rounded, and he's always game. And uh, I'm going to go with Trinaldo. I think we might be getting a picture like this, but I would not be surprised if, if, if the newcomer goes out there and the hands looked phenomenal. And, he, and that, that's how I see him winning the fight. If he does win the fight, he's going to be using his boxing. He's going to be striking. And he's going to win a, a decision or a knockout. Um, you know, But not a lot of guys go out there and knock out Trinaldo. So don't bank on that. But Trinaldo's the pick. The black country banger. <clears throat> All right. Calms that. Hey, you know what? That's a fight that you could possibly, just to put that out there, I, I, don't be surprised if I change my mind on that pick. And, and I say this just to let you guys know, if you see on my Instagram, if I do pick um, Herbert, if I have a change of heart on that, you know, we still got some time to do research. But as of right now, I'm picking Trinaldo. But don't be shocked if I swap that up on you guys. So Herbert might be the selection come pick day. But right now, I'm going with Trinaldo, man. I got to go with the veteran here. Now we got Kamzat Kimaev taking on Heis McKee. And uh, Kamzat, man, looked phenomenal in his UFC debut. And uh, I guess they just they just moved him up the uh, the ladder on the card that was recently just changed on Tapology. They had him down below a while ago. Coming in as, they had him as a minus 550, but check the line now, guys. Minus 1,000, minus 900. It's ridiculous. Probably rightfully so, though. You know, as impressive as he looked in that fight. I mean, you saw him, what, he, what he did to John Phillips. Just, this guy's like a more dangerous Khabib. Uh, maybe that's a little excessive, right? Let him prove himself first, but... I say that because he has these long limbs. He's just like a nasty looking dude, man. This guy's that's that's the that's what a modern day warrior looks like. The most dangerous uh, mixed martial art fighters. This is the look that they have. They have that haircut, that beard, ripped up, long limbs, six foot two, seventy five inch reach. You know, like we'll see we'll see what this guy's about. Um, I, I expect him to go in there and uh, and, and make work of this guy, Heist McKee, or Rice McKee. He's only 24 years old. Both these guys are young. Uh, McKee fighting out of Northern Ireland. Uh, this was a guy that was, he's very scrappy. He, he reminds me a lot of the fighter that we were talking about earlier in the card. This guy, you know, he's wiry. He's, he's kind of has uh, not the most polished striking, but he's aggressive at times. He's a little wild with it. Has good jujitsu as well. But this is such a big step up for him, in my opinion. Even though uh, Kamzat only has seven professional fights, he just stepped in the octagon not too long ago. 
He's already comfortable out there. He's obviously settled in, just getting ready to do it again. And I think it's going to be probably an exhibition. He's going to get takedowns again. He's probably going to work him. <clears throat> I wish I was able to grab this fight at like a minus 400 or something. Maybe you could do something with it, but it's so high. Take a look at McKee here. 10, 2, and 1. Well-rounded. Some submissions, some, some punch, some finishes with the hands. And uh, like I said, if you, if you watch him on tape, you know, just uh, he's an aggressive dude, kind of athletic and wiry and just a little unorthodox. Like I said, very similar to that other fighter on the card. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think this is a no-brainer, right? We're all picking Kamzat to win the fight. But it would be exciting if we we see McKee pull up the upset. Probably be rooting for him. I don't know, actually, because I kind of want to see Kamzat start to make a name for himself. He might be a character. But it would be cool to see McKee pull off the upset and start to make a name for himself. But highly doubt it. So Kamzat's, Kamzat is the pick. All right. So this fight card has 15 fights on it. 15 fights taking place, man. A lot of fights. <clears throat> Talked about him earlier. Here he is. Alex Cowboy Oliveira taking on Peter Sabata. Peter Sabata, a guy that's been constantly, constantly underestimated in my opinion. You know, this guy, he's kind of, he looks kind of basic, but he's a very skilled fighter. He's a very tough dude. Great jujitsu. It's kind of crazy. He's like German, but he's also from Jamaica too. He reps the Jamaican flag too. Interesting dude. Alex Cowboy Oliveira. This is a guy I've seen fight live a couple times. Extremely aggressive. You know, this guy has nasty striking, good grappling. He's in your face. It's always an exciting fight with Alex Cowboy Oliveira. He's had his issues outside the, the octagon, but got that all settled up, it looks like. And dude is a stud. Dude is a, he's a, a true stud, man. Nasty Muay Thai. <clears throat> you see him over here getting tested. No problem. <laughs> Ain't like that. But uh, I, I like this guy, man. I'm a fan of his. Uh, I'm a true fan of his. And I, I like Peter Sabata, too. Uh, we'll take a look at the, these guys' resumes. I've, as of recently, we'll start off with Peter Sabata. 17, 6, and 1. Coming off that loss against Leon Edwards. But Leon Edwards is a guy, obviously, very under, underrated. Very good fighter. And then I took out Ben Saunders and took out Nicholas Dalby. Talked about that earlier. Nicholas Dalby, a guy that had a lot of hype, and this was that's one of the fights that kind of derailed him. And uh, I, I think that you know it had to do with you know this, the skills uh, of Sabata as well. Lost to Kyle No Kyle Noak, the old the uh, Aussie dude, very tough dude. And other than that, you know he's went in there and handled business, but not a lot of big names. Um, like I said though, he can hold his own on the feet. You know you see him got finish over over finishes over guys like Ben Saunders. Um, you know Ben Saunders tends to be finished by a lot of guys though. Um, but the thing is. Don't sleep on Sabata's jiu-jitsu. Very high, high-level jiu-jitsu. Um, not a lot of submissions in his career. You see a couple of rear naked chokes, but this guy, if you talk to the to the guys that know about him and stuff, and you talk to the, the guys in the fight game, people always rave about his his uh, jiu-jitsu skills on the mat. So keep an eye on that. But uh, I'm definitely going to go Alex Cowboy Oliveira. The line, I think the line's probably off, though. If you take a look at the line, Alex Cowboy around minus 170. I would not be surprised if Sabata wins this fight. I think this fight's going to play out very closely. I think that Sabata, that's what he does. He always makes these fights play out closely, even when he's a dog and he steps in there. And sometimes he pulls off the upsets too, like we talked about. And uh, I could see this fight, you know, being um, a little bit of a brawl at times. And then we've got some grappling exchanges mixed in. And I could see Sabata maybe reversing Cowboy. Cowboy sometimes puts himself in sloppy positions. And Sabata's a very polished grappler. Wouldn't be surprised if he pulls off the upset. But I think Alex Cowboy Oliveira is a little bit more dangerous in the feet, a little bit more rangy, and I'm a fan of his, and I'm going to pick him to win the fight. All right. 15, 15 fights on the card, and we're sliding right through them. This is a, a fight that I'm very excited for. Another fighter that I like a lot, man. Paul Craig, the Bear Jew, taking on the uh, another another Dagestani fighter in Antigilov. This guy, very high-level grappling. This guy is a, a tank of a man. When he gets a hold of you, he has the jaws of life. When Antigilov grabs you, he gets takedowns, and uh, he'll power submit you all day. The only problem is, is his gas tank. This guy has gassed out. We've seen it before. Uh, we saw him gas out in the, um, I think in both these fights, really. This fight was only in the first round, but they were brawling out. But the Ayan Kutilaba fight, he gassed, that was another first-round loss, and he, got, he gassed out in there. But it was very, very high-paced fight. I mean, they were going balls of the wall from the beginning. And uh, Kutilaba did not slow down when he did slow down. 
And uh, he's the type of guy, man, in Tiggy Love, that he really goes in for those takedowns and he wants to submit you early. And he'll put himself in a position where he'll gas himself out because he's just ripping for the takedowns and, some, and then he doesn't get them sometimes and it hurts him. Coming off two losses here. And now he has a guy in Paul Craig that is not going to gas out. Paul Craig will not gas out. Has a very underrated jujitsu. Very, in my opinion, very high caliber jujitsu. We've seen this guy pull off miraculous submissions inside the octagon. <clears throat> uh, you know, against guys like, uh, well, first off, he, he submitted uh, Vinicius Moeda, who's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu champion. Kennedy and Ch Chaku finished him with a triangle choke. But how about the Magomed Ankalaev, a guy that's a, a potential title title challenger uh, in the years to come, and he submitted him with one second left in the third round. That You you, you can't underestimate stuff like that, man. You got to give credit where credit's due. Pulled off the armbar on Luis Enrique da Silva. I mean, this guy, guillotine chokes, triangle chokes. If Antigilov slows down and uh, the bear juke, and, you know, he's going to have that cardio going, don't be surprised if uh, he pulls off the submission. <clears throat> you know, let's take a look at the line. It's basically a pick'em. And at this point, yeah, it's, it's a pick'em. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Paul Craig. I was actually on Antigilov over the last day or two, but I've been back and forth in my head. And, and I, I think that Paul Craig is so tough. I think that he could hold... Hold strong, avoid the submission. He has good submission defense too. Uh, I, I don't think he gets knocked out like we've seen him get knocked out before. Uh, obviously, he's been knocked out by uh, Alonzo Menafield. That was nasty. Jimmy Crute got the Kimura on him, but he ate some sh some shots in that fight too. He was hurt, and he does take damage. But Antig Antigilov can drop ha drop hammers on you too and hurt you early. But uh, I think that he could survive the onslaught, and then I would like to have my money on him because uh, his cardio is going to hold up better, and he's going to finish to the to the finish line a little bit stronger. So I'm going to go with, with uh, the Bear Jew, man, Paul Craig. And I'm a big Paul Craig fan. You know, I love the way he starts starts every fight, man. He goes across the octagon, stone face, looks at his opponent, man. This guy doesn't care, you know, win, lose, or draw. He goes right back, you know, from one fight to the next, and he's ready to go. This guy is extremely tough. And uh, I'm going to be rooting for Paul Craig. Representing Scotland, man. Shout out to, uh, shout out to all the Scottish fighters who's ever watching this, man, from Scotland. Much respect, man, to all this, the Scottish fighters. I don't know why he didn't go with the nickname, like, uh, uh, you know, what, what's the guy's name slipping my mind over here? Shame on me. <clears throat> Come on, William, William Wallace, right? What was that guy's name? William, was it just William Wallace, right? This, this guy from uh, Braveheart. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Maybe use the nickname Braveheart or, uh, you know. Something with the Wallace or something. But he picked Bear Jew, which is weird because he's not Jewish. Uh, I don't know what, what the whole story behind that nickname is. Uh, I know that he didn't even want to talk about how he got the nickname. Maybe it's because he used to beat guys up with a baseball bat or something. I think that had, that's what that guy did in that movie, in Glorious Bastards. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with him to win the fight. You see Antigilov here. This was against Ayan Kutilaba, another guy that is a beast when he walks out, right? I love I loved the way Kutilaba handles business. Um, you know... Oh, you know what fight we got to get matched up, man? How about Ian Kutilaba versus the Bear Jew versus Paul Craig? That would be a crazy fight. Imagine those guys staring at each other, ready to go. You know, uh, Craig coming out with the, the Scottish blue face paint. How about Kutilaba brings back out the Hulk, the green face paint? That would be a crazy one to see. All right. Paul Craig is the pick. And that's another one. If I change it, bye bye. Uh, my fight day, you'll see it on my Instagram selected. So don't give me no crap saying, you said this guy, and then you picked that guy. I want to make that clear. So that would be the situation. It's a very close fight. But I got Paul Craig as of now. I don't see that changing. Carla Esparza taking on Marina Rodriguez. I like this fight here. Carla Esparza was a play that just cashed for me not too long ago. Um, wasn't really that happy with her, even though she cashed in for me. Um, didn't like the way she looked against Karate Hadi. I thought she could have looked a lot better. She won a split decision. Uh, <clears throat> victory there, decision. And she, she was dominating that fight. She would start tagging Michelle Watterson up, and then she would start backpedaling. Really wasn't happy with that. Thought she could have really put a stamp on that fight, easily won it, and got one takedown in the fight, and really didn't go for the takedowns that much. You know, this was the inaugural champion of the division, the Cookie Monster. She's a tough chick. Um, I like this girl, Marina Rodriguez, though. She kind of reminds me of what, what we're seeing a lot right now. A lot of young, tough, skilled Brazilian women fighters. We've been seeing a lot of them. This girl's undefeated, 33 years old, so she got to start, you know, start stepping it up. She took out Tisha Torres, got to, had to draw at Cynthia Carvillo, Jessica, Jessica Aguilar, eh, 
Miranda Marcos draw. You know, she could hold her own in the feet. Very good striking. Very rangy for the division. Uh, you know, she uh, yeah, she has that Muay Thai background. Her, her striking is definitely her strong suit. And uh, I'm definitely, I'm going to pick her to win this fight. I like her to win this fight. Carla Esparza is a girl that can definitely try to spoil the party. Maybe she gets some takedowns and <clears throat> maybe uses her boxing a little bit. You know, sometimes when you push Carla Esparza into the corner, she, she'll fight back. And she, sometimes she shines when she's getting pushed in the corner. And I expect Marina Rodriguez to put it on her. Um, but again... I don't know, man. She's very. She looked very hesitant in that fight, uh, as far as it did. And uh, I'm not going to be backing her here. I got Marina Rodriguez. Getting to the top of the card. We got three more fights. We talked about baseball a little bit earlier. I'll make it quick, but if we got any baseball fans in here, comment below. I want to know what your guys' teams are. Uh, for all the baseball fans out there. I know some people don't mess with baseball. It's kind of, uh, you know, some people do, some people don't. Uh, I mean, I'm curious who, uh, what teams we got represented out here on the show. But uh, now we're getting to the top three. The big three, we got Fabricio Verdum taking on Alexander Gustafson. This is a good fight, an excellent matchup. Uh, Gustafson is coming into this fight as a big favorite, coming off two losses, coming off retiring. Let's not forget, man, see him dropping the gloves there. After getting choked out by Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith, a very skilled fighter. Um, but, you know, you would like to see Gustafson had went out there and taken him out, but he didn't. And uh, Fabricio Verdum was a guy that came off a long suspension and looked chubby. He looked slow. Definitely was tough in there, but he got he got beat up by a guy that uh by a guy that came on the show right after he beat him up, right? What was that? I'm trying to think when he came on the show. I think it was before. I forget if it was before. Let me check out real quick. Number Alexi Olenek, he came on the show. I think that was, I think that was after. Yeah, split. That was split decision in May. That may up. He was one of my first people out for MMA Live discussion right after he beat him up. And uh, now I, I called that fight against Derek Lewis just to touch upon that. I said I want to see you against Lewis. I think the uh, the fight fight matchmakers are listening to uh, MMA Live discussion because they set it up. Shout out to MMA Live discussion. I'm gonna break the news. What guests we're gonna have here in a minute, so stay tuned. I'll break it right before the main event. And uh, back to this fight. Yeah, Verdum looked slow in there. Definitely, you know, he had the failed drug test, so that, that's definitely something you got to look out for. Uh, the the jujitsu skills are definitely still there. He had his moments, but he looked like he got tired. 42 years old now, was dabbling with some illegal sub substances. Now he's chubby. That's, I don't know, you know, coming off two losses. And then you got a guy in Alexander Gustafson, a guy that's contemplated retirement. He's coming off a couple losses as well. Kind of curious how his body's gonna look when he steps in there fight night. Uh, had a little exhibition bout here, probably you know test himself at the weight. And uh, I mean, lost to John Jones, no real shame in that. But looked horrible in that fight, man. He was supposed to look better than the last fight. The, the, the first fight was very close, and he looked worse in the second the second run. And John Jones has been looking horrible every time he steps in there. Um, some people might get mad, some Jones fans, but I thought Jones lost that last fight. And Jones is, you know, I don't know what's up with that guy. People like to. To rave about John Jones. I mean, he really hasn't been... He's been squeaking by. He's going to lose soon. I called it I called it a while ago. He will lose soon. Um, but, you know, Fabricio Verdum, you know, he's a big dog here. I mean, if Anthony Smith can submit submit Alexander Gustafson, even though he did hurt him a little bit on the feet too first, uh, why can't Fabricio Verdum submit him as well? Uh, I do have Alexander Gustafson to win this fight. I think he wins it. Uh, I think this line's kind of high, though, in my opinion. And maybe there's some value on Verdum. Um, you know, Verdum, maybe he's mad about that loss. Maybe he's coming in here a little bit more in shape. Just had a, you know, a fight back in the octagon after being out for, for some time. So he's getting polished up a little bit, getting the, uh, the wheels moving, oiling him up. Maybe he looks a little bit better this time around, but definitely got to go Alexander Gustafson, uh, after what I just saw from Verdum and with the, with the question marks behind him and the fact that Gustafson, when he's, when he's, <clears throat> when he's game and he's, he's in the right state of mind, he's one of the best fighters on planet earth. I think still to this day, if he puts it together. So, Gustafson should win all the striking exchanges, really. If it goes to the decision, it's a, you know, a striking match. Gustafson has a nice jab. I think he'll put more volume on Verdum, and uh, I'll pick him to win the fight. And you see uh, Fabricio, man, looking chubby against the uh, Boa Constrictor. And he got, he got whooped up in that fight. He, got, got, uh, he had some moments, too, but he got cracked up a little bit. All right. Get to the co-main event. Mauricio Shogun Hua taking on 
Antonio, Rogerio, Naguera. This is the third time these guys are going at it. This is Little Nog, too. Make sure you guys understand that. This is Little Nog. Uh, Little Nog, in my opinion, has a little bit better boxing. The Southpaw, you know, he's a little, little bit more of a boxer than Big Nog. And he's getting one more fight in there before he retires at the age of 44 years old. And uh, coming off that loss to Ryan Spawn, who Ryan Spawn really hasn't been looking that good. Had the knockout over Sam Alvey, again, showing that he has the boxing skills. Uh, if you guys remember when he really stepped into the first time he stepped into the octagon, took out Louise Kane, a guy that had a lot of a lot of promise too. He was undefeated at the time. And Noguera came in, made his debut, and uh knocked him out. Looked very good in that fight. And uh, yeah, so just don't don't sleep on the boxing, man. This guy holds his own. Uh, knocked out Patrick Cummings, Sam Alvey, uh, took Rashad Evans, took took him to a decision, took him out there, finished Tito Ortiz. Remember that fight? Finished Tito. You look at his losses. I mean, some back in the day, these are some top names: Ryan Bader, Phil Davis, Anthony Johnson, <clears throat> Shogun. Yeah, he lost that Shogun fight. It was that was a very entertaining fight? And uh, they also fought. Let's see. They also fought way back in the day, yeah, 2005. So Shogun won the first two matches, and uh, we're gonna see Nogueira's getting one more crack at him. And uh, actually, yeah, I think yeah, those are the two. And. Um, I think that Shogun should win this fight. Take a look at Shogun here. Cracking. Uh, I think who is that? I forgot his name. This Asian guy. Cracking him with the soccer kick. Had the epic fights with Dan Henderson. Alistair Overeem. Shogun, a true legend in the game. You see him over here with Lyoto Machida. Don't forget, he knocked Machida out. Took the middleweight title. And uh, Shogun is an absolute legend. I think that Shogun has just taken so much so much damage throughout the years that obviously if he gets tagged, he you know, his chin still holds up a little bit, but he just he doesn't get put to sleep all the time, but he gets... He gets hurt, and then he ends up getting finished. And I think Noguera can easily knock him out. Um, you know, Noguera, you see what he did here, what he's done here recently. We take a look at Shogun, Shogun's resume as of recently. Obviously, you know it's been great. You know, throughout the years, had that 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 finish against Tyson Pedro, and then uh, had the split decision draw against Paul Craig. That was a fight that I thought Craig, I thought Craig won that fight. I thought Craig looked better in that fight, and uh, Paul Craig almost knocked him out. We talked about how Shogun gets gets hurt. And that fight, Paul Craig had him stumbling around a little bit too. So, you know, he, he he takes damage, man. Anthony Smith, you saw what he did to him. He was out on his feet for a while until Anthony Smith put the stamp on it. But, you know, Shogun's won, you know, he, he's won a lot of his previous fights, man. It's kind of interesting to look at. Even though I think this should be a loss, but Shogun is a legend. He is a legend. And the line is high, in my opinion. Minus 185. So yeah, it was as low as minus in the minus two hundreds, minus two ten. See, I think it's coming back down to reality a little bit. I think people understand that this is probably going to be a brawl, right? Think about this fight in the small octagon, two legends that don't back down, that have a history of fighting each other, that know each other. <clears throat> you know, this is going to be a brawl. Someone's probably going to get knocked out. Maybe you want to check the prop bet on this f for this fight not to uh, not to go the distance. It's in the line. You're probably not going to get a good line on it either. But I'm going to pick Shogun. Pick Shogun to win this fight, but do not be surprised. All right, man. The main event, guys. Now, before we get to this main event, prediction between Robert Whitaker, ex UFC middleweight champion, and Darren Till. I want to let you guys know who's going to be joining MMA Live discussion this week. Uh, we got the one and only Hannah Goldie. We touched upon it on one of the fight companions. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Hannah Goldie, you got to check her out, man. Hannah Goldie, she she made a name for herself on the Contender Series and um, made, since made her UFC debut. And I'll, I'll pull her up for you guys real quick. Hannah Goldie is uh, somebody She's somebody you guys are going to want to tune in to, to come watch, man. She has a cool personality. Um, very, very fit. She's Her striking is nasty. Throws a nasty body kick. Can throw a pizza down like no other. Check, check her out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting show. So you guys are going to want to tune in Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. We're going to have Hannah Goldie joining the show. And uh, I don't know who, I'm trying to think of who her boyfriend is. I think this guy might be a, might be a serious dude. I mean, he looks like a fighter. So we got we to gotta ask about this dude too, see what's up with him. But that's, that's who will be joining the show. And then um, back to the main event, Bobby Knuckles. A.K.A. the Reaper, A.K.A. Robert Whitaker, uh, the ex-champ who was coming off a loss. Man, just had his belt taken from him. 
20 and 5. This guy, in my opinion, really made a name for himself on the Ultimate Fighter show. He went out there. He's just been knocking guys out ever since the show. If you guys were watching the show, you know what I'm talking about. A ferocious striker from, from day one. And obviously, you know, just groomed his skills, you know, polished them up. And uh, need, needs to polish them up a little bit more if he's going to take out a guy like Israel Adesanya or Paulo Costa. Got to polish up the skills. He's been been more of a brawler as of recently. Yoel Romero hurt him a lot. Israel Adesanya hurt him again. Um, you know, I like the fact that he's taking some a little bit of time off. He's letting the brain rest up a little bit. And uh, now he's got a guy in Darren Till that's going to be throwing bows at his head too. So uh, Darren Till, we talked about it earlier. I'll talk about it again. I thought he lost the Gastelum fight. Uh, hopefully I don't upset you guys with that, but just that's how I felt about it. Either way, a very close fight. He got the victory, uh, got knocked out by Masvidal before that, and Tyron Woodley basically knocked him out, destroyed him, elbowed him up, and then pulled off the darts choke on him, which Woodley ain't doing that to nobody nowadays. And Tyron Woodley is scared to fight Colby Covington. Uh, for all you Woodley fans out there, you know, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest Colby fan. I like what Colby brings to the sport, which is with the, with the crap talking and whatnot makes the fights entertaining. I want to see that Usman rematch, but uh, I would love to see... Woodley take on Colby. You guys know how that fight's going to go. Colby's going to destroy Woodley, and I would love to see where that line's at and just exploit it because uh, Colby would absolutely destroy Woodley. We saw what Gilbert Burns just did to Woodley. It'd be way worse. Colby would be getting takedowns left and right. He'd be destroying him. It'd be blood everywhere, and uh, I think it'd be cool to see. And Tyrone Woodley doesn't want to sign the contract, so let's get that straight. You know, Woodley, you know, he talked talked a lot of stuff, and now he doesn't want to sign the contract. Now, I do. I will say this, though. It seemed like at one point in time, Woodley was trying to sign the contract and Colby wasn't trying to sign the contract a while back because I think Colby was going a different route because he saw, he knew he had the title shot coming. Um, so it's funny to see them playing that game back and forth. But uh, don't get it twisted. You guys know how that fight's going to go. And, um, and uh, you know, now we got back to this fight. Um, you know, Darren Till dropped the ball there. Got dropped in that fight. Jorge Masvidal basically made a name off him that night, right? Then he went back. And hit hit uh, Leon Scott with a two piece and a soda, so he started to make a name for himself there. <clears throat> and then um, he let that happen to him. And then uh, he went out there though, and then he got a victory against Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin Gastelum, a guy that's a, a very talented fighter, so that was a big win for him. Now he's taking on another top level guy, and Robert Whitaker. And uh, you know, let's not forget, man, these were all welterweight bouts too. So this was his middleweight debut, and uh, fighting at the middleweight division again. And um, Robert Whitaker. I like Robbie Whitaker, man. This guy is nasty. He's only 29 years old. Did lose his belt, but he's going to be coming back with a vengeance here. I, I really believe that. Taking out some some top-level opponents. Finish guys like Jacare Souza, Derek Brunson, uh, Yoel Romero. That was a very close fight. A lot of people thought that should have been a draw. And uh, took out Yoel the first time, too. And then tried to, tried to go out there and kind of try to make it... How do I say this? You know, in the Israel Adesanya fight, I thought he could have did a couple of things differently. He, he made it a ferocious fight from the beginning. He was trying to go for that knockout. I think he should have slowed down a little bit and then let them get, both of them get a little bit more tired and then make it a brawl. I think he would have been able to get more shots off instead of in the first round where they're both fresh trying to make it a tactical brawl where he's going and throwing bombs and Israel Adesanya is just a sniper. Israel Adesanya is an amazing kickboxer and uh, Israel Adesanya sniped him that night. So... You know, Whitaker has to clean that up. But this is a different matchup. Darren Till, well, he'll brawl it out with you too. So I expect this to be a fight that goes to deep waters. And I, and I got Bobby Knuckles. I got I got Robert Whitaker to win the fight. <clears throat> you take a look at him here. That was that was the loss against Israel Adesanya. Tough dude. You know, he, he got dropped at the end of the first round, came back, got finished in the second. And uh, Darren Till. This guy, Darren Till, man. How can you pick him in this fight? I mean, I get he's very skilled. Cracking open Coca-Cola's. Not even a Diet Coke. Look at him. <laughs> what a weird dude, this guy. <laughs> you know, he's always posting all this weird stuff on Instagram, but the guy is a skilled fighter. The guy is a skilled, skilled dude. Uh, take a look at uh, <laughs> Mike Till right here. Darren Perry. That's a fight that we got to see, right? <laughs> it's it's That's a weird situation for those of you guys that, that know what's going on. Remember they bumped into each other and uh, Mike Perry is like, we should spar. And then he's like, oh, we should go in the sauna. But, uh, you know, it seemed like they were cool when they were in person. But then, not anymore, man. If those guys see each other, Perry says he's going to try to take them out. And I believe him because Perry's Perry's uh, got some loose wires right now. But uh, back to this fight. I got Bobby Knuckles to win it to uh, to take the main event. The line is close. So you can go either way with this fight. But Darren Till's very game. <clears throat> he's a very game fighter. But that's going to be the pick. And uh, like I said, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time zone. 
MMA live discussion. We got Hannah Goldie joining the show. Fight Companion going to be taking place for the, the main card. I believe it's going to be 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I believe on a card like this, it'll probably be a 10 p.m. Eastern card. So you guys can catch me on the with the with for the Fight Companion. The Fight Companions have been fire. We've been having an excellent panel, excellent people stop in. Shout out to everybody that, that's been dropping in lately. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of cool dudes have been, been, uh, been, been joining the show. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. And, um, I, I would love to like to throw some names out, but, uh, some of the names are slipping me and I don't want to shout some people out and shout, shout, other, don't shout other guys out. So shout out to everybody that joins the show. And, um, it's pretty much, pretty much everything that's going on over here. I'm going to have a couple, a couple spots in this card like usual. Um, I, I got a couple spots I feel good about and, uh. We'll attack. We'll attack again. You know, if you lose a card, it don't mean nothing. You're gonna have losing cards here and there. You can't win them all. I had a spot. You know, a, a spot where I went on like 13 uh, fight cards in a row, where I didn't lose one fight card. All profitable nights in a row. I've had a couple bumps in the road as of recently. It's completely normal. If you're new to the fight game, as far as betting goes, uh, you guys are gonna understand that this is how the fight game goes. You could not profit on every card, man. It's it's a, it's a hard thing to do. You got to put your homework in, and sometimes even on paper, man, when you're making the right decisions, you're still going to lose. It's the fight game. Crazy things are going to happen in there. It's just what happens. So don't get discouraged. Just balance your books. Be calm. Don't do anything outrageous. Don't start chasing fights because you're going to lose your entire bankroll. You slow down. You're going to find another spot and another card down, down the line, and you're going to build your bankroll up from there again. And uh, you know you want to you play with that bankroll. You don't want to lose it. You want to build it up slowly but surely. So if you take a couple losses... Don't let them. Don't let those losses go too crazy. Come, you know, eventually you go right back up, and, and that's what it's all about. And it's all about profiting long term, year to year to year to year, and that's what it's all about, all right? So, with that being said, I appreciate everybody that that that's hung around this entire uh, breakdown, this entire episode. I appreciate all you guys. Much love to all you guys that support me over here. Please like this video right now if you've been hanging around this whole time, man. Support the cause. Hit subscribe. Like the video. It goes a long way for for me over here with the algorithms. And uh, be safe out there. Eat some healthy food, and, uh, and 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 you know, be safe and be healthy out there. Don't be eating junk food. Uh, you know, lowering your immune system and whatnot. Make sure you're exercising. I'm gonna be constantly letting you guys know that you should be doing that, man. I want to motivate you guys. If you're not doing that, if you're not doing the right things, go out there, take care of yourself. All right. And uh, on that note, we'll uh, we'll sign out. All right, signing out. The, the, the MMA, MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.